Hello everybody, you are watching Eddie's English Literature. I am Ardhan Dude. Today, we are going to understand the very response to the military heroism that we find in J.B. Saw's Arms and the Man, the very anti-romantic, pragmatic drama of ideas. We will find out or search a bit what sort of military heroism is being rebuked or that sort of idealistic notion is being refuted by George Barnard Saw's Arms and the Man. Military heroism regards a soldier as a superhuman being above the extraordinary weaknesses that we common men face. He moved entirely by the noble impulses, patriotism and self-sacrifice. And he has the utter disregard of his own life, striving for honor or the honor only. And these are the traits that military heroism is invested with. That sort of idealistic heroism is the fundamental and often universal ideas explored in literary works. Just search with the great epics or poems. Everywhere the heroes exhibit that qualities. Be it in great epics like Ramayana, Mahabharata or in Iliad, Odyssey or another sort of literary outputs of such kind exhibit a kind of heroistic idealism. That heroistic idealism is being marketed or rather told only to make the whole design of war as if a heroistic one. But such notion is being refuted or the rebuked by the very notions of war poets that we have already found out in Georgian poetry. But in George Bernard Shaw's dramatic ideologies, in his drama of ideas, where this sort of romantic idealisms of heroism is being refuted. You know, the world is a kind of a machinery of mass destruction. It is in fact a kind of uh, marketing also where the soldiers are make a puppet in the hands of some machinery where which are killing is being organized and by this way the arms are traded, the lands are purchased or some political ideologies are gained. But who are the victim? The soldiers are the victim. Now this military heroism is being propounded or rather exhibited or marketed by this kind of war mongers who like to sell or justify the very notion of war. In war terms, arms and the man George Barnard Shaw's Arms and the Man is the conflict between idealism and realism, between military heroism and the military pragmatism. The romantic ideas of war as a glorious opportunity for a man to display courage and honor is dispelled when we find the so-called Raina's hero, Sargias admits that his heroic cavalry or heroic cavalry when it charged that won the battle was the wrong thing to do. His notable action does not get him his promotion in true military essence and technology and technique and Sargius learns the realism of life. In the hero Blansley, he is totally made of realism, keeping chocolates instead of ammunition in his cartridge belt, showing contempt for sentimentality, and reacting in a particular manner to his father's death. However, 
Nicola is the consummate realist in this play. You know, the servant Nicola. Nicola's message is adapt, exploit, and a kind of survival strategy. Blandly proves to have a romantic side after all. Because um, when in the but in a most balanced character in him, we'll find out uh, a kind of a temper. His romantic, realistic ideologies. You know, his romance is tempered by realistic ideologies. That I mean to say. So things that this view is the view of home sweet home who have never been to the battlefront you know romantic heroism in reality is nothing a soldier is like a common man what is his profession and a true soldier is not anxious to fling away his life but he adopts all means to save it the hero blansley climbs a water pipe and enters a lady's bedroom in order to save his life he does not jump to the mouth of the cannon like sergius uh, who is being court marshaled in the course of the play for his act of temporary so foolishness has no account in militarism yeah. too but that romantic ideology of great heroism that is being propagated or sold is a machinery of political ideology where with, whereby the politician can justify the merciless killing in the name of war a true hero is a coward at heart as much as we are even Sargias who displays heroic bravado in the beginning ultimately exclaims soldiering is the coward's act of attacking mercilessly when you were strong and keeping out of harm's away when you were weak. This is the whole secret of successful thing or a successful fighting he says. Get your opponent at a disadvantage and never never fight on equal terms so these are the true ideology of war but what we read about people talking about military heroism and how do they taking it are being sure about water food and comfort since the war destroys real families resources and homes the soldiers of war are forced to come together and make a new kind of reality. Saul's idea might seem fantastically unreal or cynically unnatural, but Saul so asserts that that military authority will bear testimony to this unromantic fact. The so-called military heroism is the invention of civilians. It lives in imagination of us only. In reality, there is no such existence of military heroism. When the world is such divested with war principles, the whole world is facing war brutal one after another. It is to be remembered by the common man that there is no such patriotic heroism or romantic heroism or heroic romanticism if we can avoid it we would surely do it so fighting is the necessity not the heroic urge in us so taking that notion forward judge bernard saw in his arms and the man propagated and exhibited and inflated the balloon of romantic heroism i think you have understood a bit what I am getting you the points that military heroism or the romantic sort of taking at the war is nothing to do in reality. If you have any question just pop up here and ask me. I will try my best to give answers. Like, share, comment and obviously subscribe to my channel to get 
this kind of post further bye bye